Lancelot. <laughs> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn of praise is, is hymn 2, S266. Hymn S266 in our hymn.
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please say responsibly, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He second reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what he pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand <laughs> runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So they will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down to my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. The priest who sponsored me for ordination many years ago now was a man named Father Dan Sullivan. He was a true example and mentor to me, a man whose advice and counsel I relied on again and again. And there was one time when he and I were talking and I was about to move to a new parish. And I said something like, I'm really glad that church hired me. Dan's eyes got very wide and his back stiffened, and he said, hired, hired, the hired cares nothing for the sheep. He flees at the first sign of trouble, quoting today's gospel lesson. He said, never think you're hired, you are called. You know, I never forgot that lesson. <laughs> today's gospel, I think, is especially pertinent to us here at Christ Church Guilford, you know, as, as you and I anticipate the coming of your new rector and his family. Jesus' words remind us that Father Michael comes to us as a shepherd, not as a hired hand, and that he's called to look beyond for those who do not belong to this flock, and that shepherds are called to point not to themselves, but to the one who is the good shepherd. Jesus puts this contrast between the shepherd and hired hand in sharp focus. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves, and, and the sheep leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. You know, as your vestry and wardens have learned, you know, the Episcopal Church has its own kind of esoteric vocabulary regarding rectors and parishes. You know, the priest is called, not hired. The details of the arrangement are, is, is, are, is not made in a contract, but instead in a memorandum of understanding. <laughs> These emphasize this special relationship that exists between priest and people. I think it's an important perspective to have as Christ Church begins its new chapter of its life with this new rector. Remember always, Father Michael will see this not as a job, but as a calling to serve. And for you, he is not the hired hand, who you can, you know, who he can be told what to do, or the hired hand to be expected to do everything. 
You know, there is always this temptation in churches to think that the church is where the minister ministers and the congregation congregates. <laughs> Not true. Again, I think the, the Good Shepherd image is helpful. You know, the shepherd's role is different than the sheep. A shepherd guides, protects, nurtures, and cares for the sheep, while the sheep do their sheep thing, whatever that is. St. Paul tells us that the role of the Christian leader, the priest, the shepherd, is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. The shepherd's role is for you to enable you to do your Christian thing, to make a difference, to be servants and witnesses to God's love to the world. And then Jesus continues. He says, I am the good shepherd. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, was not just concerned about his existing flock of, of 12 disciples and the crowd that followed him, but also those other sheep that do not belong to this fold. The faithful shepherd, priest, pastor, needs to be like Jesus in this regard and look beyond the flock into the world. Now, you can hear the rumblings that have happened in Episcopal churches far and wide, you know, we pay his or her salary. They need to be concerned about us. I've heard that. That was that's been accused of me. I remember hearing of a, a great priest, one who took this passage very seriously. She opened the church she served to the community, a community that was in need. And at one point, well, 2,000 people a week passed through the doors of that church to receive food or shelter or, or AA meetings or counseling or encouragement or but some people in the church, needless to say, complain that she didn't spend enough time ministering to them. Christianity at its core is outwardly focused. In the Great Commission, Jesus calls us to go and make disciples of all nations. He tells the disciples in Acts to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We come to church so that we might be fed to do what? To go in peace, to love, and serve the Lord. Every pastor, every shepherd is called to be outwardly, outwardly directed. And my expectation is, is that as Father Michael is faithful, his ministry will bear fruit. You know, fruit that will be new people coming here. People with new perspectives, new ideas, different needs and different expectations. And you know what? That's going to be a problem. But it's a good problem. It's a good problem. Because it's a sign that the Spirit of God is working in this place. And lastly, you know, there's an old joke about what three different clergy have in their sacristies as they prepare for worship. You know, the Roman Catholic priest has a crucifix in, in, in his, as he goes out to worship. And the Baptist preacher has a big Bible that he looks at as he goes out, you know, to lead worship. And the Episcopal priest has a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, there are two back there. Just as just for the record. <laughs> Father Michael is called to be your shepherd, pastor, and priest. He will be successful in that calling to the extent that he points you and me not to himself, but instead to the one who truly is the Good Shepherd. For it is the Good Shepherd, Jesus, who can make a transforming difference in your life and in mine. He tells us clearly, he says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus knew what his mission was. His purpose was. He tells us in Mark that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to offer his life as a ransom for many. Just as the young shepherd David used his sling to protect the sheep from danger, so Jesus offered his life to protect us from the powers that seek to destroy us. 
the Good Shepherd, also knows us. He says, I know my own, and my own know me. You know, in a world of increasing isolation and separation and division and despair, it's good news to know that we have a God who knows us and loves us. I think we all know that one of the great gifts of the deep relationships that we have, our marriages, our friendships, our, our family, is, you know, that, that the other person knows you, good, bad, warts and all, and they still accept us, and they still love us. That's the kind of relationship we can have, we have, with Jesus. And we can know him as well. He says, I know my own, and my own know me. And we can know Jesus. <clears throat> We can know Jesus as we come forward in the breaking of bread. We can know him as we encounter him in scripture. We can know him as we serve in Christ's name. We can know him as we experience God's power, God's love, God's forgiveness in our lives. For the good shepherd calls you and me to life. In the verse immediately preceding today's lesson, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. You know, just as the good shepherd enabled, just as a lay shepherd leads, enables sheep to do their sheep thing, so the good shepherd enables us to do our human thing. With God's guidance, God's protection, his forgiveness, his nurturing, his strength, we can truly become the men and women that God created us to be. Irenaeus, one of the great saints of the early church, wrote this. He said, the glory of God is humanity fully alive? That's what God calls you and me to, to be fully alive, to life in all its fullness and all its wonder and all its joy. Okay, so I got a test. In the days ahead, will Father Michael be called or hired? Called. Call. Will he be your shepherd or a hired hand? Shepherd. Amen. You guys pass the test. As your shepherd, he will be called not to do everything, you know, that while you watch, but instead his call will be to equip you, to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. He will be called to look beyond these walls, to seek out other sheep currently not in this fold. And most importantly, he will point us to the good shepherd, to Jesus, the one who loves us, the one who cares for us, one who calls us to new life in all its abundance. May it be so. Amen. And we continue with the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. Acknowledge one Baptist for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection. 
Peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Now I turn it over to whoever. Oh, okay, here we go. Announcements.
announcements on my phone and some on the paper. You will notice, would you like to say something about our wonderful Let Your Talent Shine, May, May 19th? Anybody have a birthday celebrating a birthday or anniversary? We do have a birthday. More than one.
Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
the morning stars sing your praises, we join with the heavenly beings and all creation as we sing with joy.
Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God 